My name is Pat Music. I've been an artist since I was four years old, a professional for the last 50 years, and I have my work in over 50 museums and public spaces across America. My husband and I are a working team. I do the conceptual design. I take it to Jerry and say, make it stand up, and he does. He's my engineer. I do a lot of the finishing work, uh, and I supervise the construction. My name is Gerald Carr. I'm a former Marine Corps fighter pilot. Uh, I spent that 11 years doing that before I was uh, brought into NASA as an astronaut. I've spent uh, another 11 years uh, with NASA. I worked in the latter part of the Gemini program, the Apollo Lunar Landing program, and uh, was assigned uh, as a commander of the third manned Skylab mission, which was 84 days. Uh, I retired uh, from the aerospace business in uh, 1998 and went to work with my wife. I helped design uh, the, the structures of the, the sculptures that we do and uh, also do a lot of the metal fabrication. In uh, 1990, the United Nations decided to do a formal celebration of Earth Day and they invited uh, 40 astronauts and cosmonauts, and I was one of those uh, that were honored by that. Six of the astronauts and cosmonauts were going to be selected uh, to speak in different languages uh, about how they felt the first time uh, they looked down at the Earth from space. Uh, when it was all over, uh, I came back down to talk with Pat. Uh, I, they had had uh, simultaneous headsets, we on the dais had none, so we only heard a language that we understood. So I asked Pat, well, what did they all say? And I said, you're not going to believe this, but they all said the same thing. I had tears in my eyes because I couldn't believe that people from different countries with different backgrounds would see our Earth and all have the same visual concept. It was something that I knew I wanted to express in art but I didn't know how I wanted to do this. And so for 20 years, it stayed in the back of my head until about two years ago, images began to emerge and Jerry and I began work on, on the exhibit, Our Fragile Home. This piece is called Raindrops Keep Falling on My Soul. In this, I was thinking about the acid rain falling on the forests of our world and I wanted to express the fragility of that forest. I used Japanese kozo paper, which is made out of the bark of the mulberry bush, and you actually see flecks of, that, of the bush in the paper. Uh, it's uh, waxed with beeswax to give it a translucent and very fragile look. Uh, Pat wanted these strips to stand out from the wall and essentially float. So we uh, designed a, a bracket and the idea was that if there's any air conditioning or any airflow in the room, the, you would actually see these things float. This piece called Our Fragile Home kind of looks like layers of the earth. You have the table. On the table is a uh, maple wood block and then building up from the block is the uh, uh, layers of uh, uh, slate and uh, representing the earth moving up to the water and then we have a layer of uh, lexan and then more slate on top of it as the earth uh, uh, emerges up through the water and then the uh, items on the top, the twig and the egg represent the plant life and the, the uh, animal life uh, that grows on the earth. The concept for this uh, is uh, in direct response to the event at the United Nations. I was thrilled because I found that at last I had um, a vision of uh, an artwork that would express the power and the impact of those common words. They all said the same thing. This piece is called Rain Songs. Actually, there are 12 of these small drawings that are mounted on the wall together uh, to serve as one large statement. The Rain Songs represent for me a new musical form uh, made out of the wooden twigs. Uh, I have a succession of music notes that sound a call to protect the forest and give us hope for the future. This piece is entitled, They All Said the Same Thing. At this point in the construction of the exhibit, I began to think I'd like to work with the words, the actual words that 
uh, I heard um, at the United Nations. And so I took the eight words and uh, used a stencil to place them on the paper in a form that resembles a wave crossing the top of the ocean. There are six of these large drawings titled The Source of Their Words. I decided I wanted to separate, pull the letters out away from the words and reassemble them in the shape of a world. Taking care of or protecting or nurturing this world is a large branch and different in each of the six drawings. The next six pieces are panels called Thought Streams. And in this, the concept was to pull the, world, the words, the letters, out of the world shape and free them into an unconscious stream of thought uh, that moves from the top to the bottom, uh, flows out onto the floor, uh, so you have a real sense of freedom here. This one extends, as Pat said, all the way to the floor, and we decided that we would let it run out on the floor about a foot and use two nice little stones to uh, uh, anchor it, and those stones are stones that we gathered up at Prince Edward Island. The next piece is called From the Void. The concept here was um, related to the uh, sculpture of eight separate pieces called Our Fragile Home. Uh, it has the same theme. The earth, um, represented by the slate fragments, is rising out of a trough that controls, sustains, holds it in place. Uh, and, and keeps it from flying out into the void. This piece is entitled Comfort. It's a, it's a fun piece that reflects my life in Vermont and uh, my earlier life in Arkansas. It's a gigantic quilt rack containing a paper quilt made out of the same Kozo paper so it has the same sort of fragile nature to it. Uh, for this piece, it suddenly dawned on me that I was dealing with all these words that were universally spoken, but I was only using English. And I wanted to use the actual language of each of the cosmonauts and astronauts. So I went to the computer and had translated all of the eight words in six different languages into 48 words and placed them randomly uh, and made the pattern of the quilt out of their words.